Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be doing a comparison against some bespoke cast iron pans that are manufactured in the US. We've got one from Finex, one from Smithies, we got one from Field and & Company, and then we're going to compare it against a regular old 12 inch cast iron pan from Lodge. So in terms of the comparison, we're going to take you through a bunch of the features that we think are important. First, how do these cast irons cook? How do they clean up? How's the finish on these cast iron? Is the surface smooth? What's the weight like? What's the thickness of the walls? How well can they retain heat? And we'll walk you through a whole bunch of other features here. And hopefully this review is just helpful. If you're looking at buying one of these brands, you can figure out which one's right for you. Now, before we jump into this, I just wanna thank the brands who sent these skillets out to us free of charge. Now we're not being paid for this review video. They sent them out to us on the assumption that we were gonna do a fair comparison and give you our honest feedback here on the channel. So the first dimension that we're gonna compare here is the smoothness and finish across these pans. And this is absolutely the biggest difference that you're gonna notice between bespoke cast iron versus a traditional lodge. And when you look at the foundry process for manufacturing cast iron, cast iron's almost always made in sandy molds. So they make a mold out of sand and then pour the iron into that. And that's how you actually form one of these cast iron pans in a foundry. So when you break away the sand mold, you're left with the iron having a bit of that sandy texture to it. And that's what delivers that rough kind of surface on, on some of these skillets. Now with the bespoke cast iron pans, they actually then machine the surfaces of these down so they're really nice and smooth and that just helps your pan act a little bit more non-stick. Now it's not to say your lodge won't be non-stick over time as you get more cooks in under your belt, but it'll take a while before the seasoning over multiple cooks gets this to the point where it's as non-stick as one of these other cast iron skillets. Now if you're handy and you're up to it, some people will actually take angle grinders or sanders to their lodge cast iron pans and just grind that down themselves. Now, of course, that's gonna work through the pre-seasoning that lodge puts on these pans at the factory, but that's absolutely an option and you just go through that re-seasoning process and you can get a pan that's roughly as smooth as these other bespoke ones as well, but again, it's gonna take you a couple hours to get that done. So let's see if we can tell a difference between these bespoke pans. So you rub your finger just along the base of the skillet there. That is absolutely smooth, just like glass. You're gonna go across the smithy here, same. You don't feel any bumps at all. Field Company, pretty similar as well, very, very smooth. When you touch the lodge, you can hear the graininess as your finger goes across that cast iron pan that just isn't present in the other skillets here. So the next dimension we're gonna compare here are the weight of these pans because after all, we're cooking in cast iron because that weight provides these skillets a beautiful thermal capacity, meaning that once we actually heat them up, they stay warm even if you put cold proteins or other cold food in here, which makes it great for delivering a ton of crust or if you're cooking over a campfire. And again, that's all driven by the weight and material of these pans. The weight of the Finax was 7.7 .7 pounds the Smithy came in heaviest at 8.6. The Field and Company was the lightest at 5.6 pounds. And the Lodge was the second heaviest at 8.1 pounds. So these are all a similar weight with the exception of the Field Company skillet, which is considerably lighter. And you can really notice that when you're using it. And it makes it frankly a, a little bit easier to use just because of the weight. You compare it to the Finex, you compare it to the smithy, you really notice that you're holding a heavy cast iron pan. But again, it's that trade-off of weight versus thermal capacity of the pan. Now, the next thing I wanna compare here is just the handles across these pans because they're actually quite different. First, I wanna talk about the Finex. It has this beautiful coiled steel handle. And the reason for that is this coil design, not only does it look great, but it actually prevents this handle from warming up. No matter how long we've cooked for using this skillet, this handle won't get hot at all. Now, the actual coil piece, it starts a little bit back from the pan. You've, you'll see you've got this little cast iron nub here. And so when you're gripping the part that is cool, it does make the pan feel a little bit heavier just because the leverage is back. 
but this thing will just never get hot. And that's a real benefit relative, frankly, to any of the other cast iron pans here. I don't notice a ton of difference between these three. All of them have nice rounded edges so that when you're holding the pan, your handle isn't actually digging into your hand that much. So I don't notice much of a difference across these skillets, but the Finex is really a standout in this category. So the next thing I wanna compare are the pour spouts on these skillets. You'll see both the Smithy and the Lodge have pour spouts built right into the sides so you can pour anything out either side, whether that's something that you're cooking in the pan that you need to pour out or whether that's the residual grease from a cook. So that's really handy. Now, going to the Finex, you might not see an obvious spout, but because of this octagonal shape that they have to the pan, you can actually use any of these edges as a pour spout and you won't get anything that drips out. So that's a pretty cool feature there. But then you go to the field company and you look at this and there's no designated pour spout. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're talking about this skillet. So now let's talk about the lids. So the Finex comes with a lid. You don't have to worry about fumbling around and finding a lid that will fit that shape. Same with Smithy, comes with a designated lid and neither of these two skillets do. So the field, the lodge, no lids there. This is the number 10 field cast iron. The number eight does have a lid option, but the number 10 doesn't. Now, this is actually a pretty important feature. And in particular, what I wanna point out with the Smithy is that the lid actually doubles as a skillet or a griddle. And that I think is really, really cool. So it, not only is this a lid, so if you're baking bread or any other recipe that you're making that actually needs a lid, you've got one. But if you wanna make smash burgers, which you all know we're a huge fan of here on the channel, you can actually just use the lid here of the Smithy. And I love that dual functionality. I think that's an ingenious little design that they incorporated here. So the next comparison we're gonna run is just how quickly these heat up and how well they retain heat. So we're gonna put all of our burners here on medium high and we're gonna let these warm up for about five minutes. And then just using our in infrared temp gun here, we'll check the temps see how these warmed up. So the results of the heat retention test are in here. I'll pop them up on the screen. But not surprisingly, because the Field and the Finex were actually the lightest pans, they heated up the fastest. And in that initial three or so minutes on the burner, we actually got both of those up to around 320 to 325 degrees, while the Smithy and the Lodge only heated up to 200 in the case of the Smithy, and 225 in the case of the Lodge. Now, what you'd also expect is that the heavier pans would retain their heat better, and that's exactly what happened. If we look at the Field and the Finex, they both lost between 180 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit over a 15 minute period, while the Lodge and the Smithy only lost 80 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So it might take you a little bit longer to heat up the heavier pan, but you can definitely tell the thermal capacity of those heavier pans will just hold that heat a lot better if you remove it from the fire or if you go and serve something in the dining table that's still in the cast iron pan, it'll stay warmer longer because you've got that residual heat from the pan that'll just continue to, to keep your food warm. Next, I wanted to touch on the fact that these are all American made. You've got Finex, which is originally manufactured in Portland, Oregon. They were acquired by Lodge in 2019, and so they shift the actual foundry part of their operation down to Lodge's foundries in Tennessee, but all of the finishing and machining and assembly is still done in Portland, Oregon. And you can actually see right here on the back of the pan, they've got a really nice design that pays homage to that origin. Now Smithy, they manufacture their skillets in Charleston, South Carolina, and similarly, you can see on the back here, they pay homage to that right with a stamp on the bottom of your skillet, which is pretty cool, I like that. Field & Company, they don't have a single location for their manufacturing, they outsource it, and they have their foundries, I believe it's in Wisconsin and Indiana, so they're spread out a little bit more. And then of course Lodge, like we mentioned with Finex, the foundries are down in Tennessee, so that's where they make those. Now the next thing I want to compare is just the overall style or aesthetic of these skillets. And the standout for me is going to be the Finex there. This octagonal shape I think looks really great. 
I love the steel coiled handle. It's just something really unique that sets that skillet apart from the others. And it's not to say that these other skillets don't look nice. They absolutely do. I love the Smithy. You got some nice touches here with this bird imprint, their logo right on the handle. You've got nice little touch finishing touches up here, beautiful stamps on the back of these. So it's not that these skillets don't look great. I'm just saying for my personal preferences, I do like the Finax design. So the last category and what I'm sure you're gonna be interested in is just the price difference between these skillets. Now the Finax without the lid runs you $190 and it's 290 with the lid. The Smithy, it's 200 on a standalone basis, 300 with the lid that doubles as the griddle. The Field Company, this is 160. And you know, those are directionally in and around the same prices for some really nice bespoke cast iron. And of course the Field and Company coming in a little bit cheaper. And I think that just has to do with the amount of weight or material of iron actually used in it relative to the others. And then lastly, you've got the Lodge. And the Lodge comes in at 20 bucks and it's available almost anywhere. So massive difference. Clearly Lodge is the winner from the price standpoint. So when you take all of that into consideration, which is our favorite pan? Well, before we get into that, I just wanna say that our favorite pan may not be the pan that's right for you. You should be thinking about which of those features is the most important. Do you want a light pan? Then you might go with the field. If you really prioritize design, maybe you go with the Finax. But for us, I actually really like the Smithy. And the reason for that, not just the fact that it's really smooth, but I love the extra weight. To me, it's not a big deal. And that's the whole reason that we're cooking with cast iron is to get that thermal capacity. And I also love the fact that the lid doubles as a griddle. So that's frankly my decision-making process behind the Smithy. My wife loves the Field Company, and that's because she prefers the lightweight and prioritizes that. But again, just think about which features are gonna be right for you as you think about making what is a pretty significant investment into one of these skillets. But these are all heirloom pieces that will last for generations to come. So if you're spending you know, two, $300 on a skillet, just keep that in mind that this is gonna last you forever. So that's the end of the review video where we take you through the differences of these skillets. But if you wanna see us cook bacon and eggs in each of these to see how they hold up and just see the cooking performance, I'm gonna put a link over here to that one if you wanna check it out. So thanks for tuning in. Consider giving this a like, leave a comment below, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.